Sends in $77. Good luck to all the runners. Hats off to you for pushing yourselves to the limit on these games. And have fun. All right, we are ready for Crash Bandicoot Insane Trilogy run by Cameron Vengeance. Let's see it. Round of applause. There we go. All right. Hey, everyone. Um, I'm Cameron Vengeance. Uh, behind me is Jay Hobbs, Violent Gamer, and Depcow. I'm going to be running Crash Bandicoot 1 for the Insane Trilogy. The objective of this is to, as soon as I hit new game, I go through the level. Or I go through all the levels to the final boss, and that's it. So I'm ready to go when you guys are. Go. All right. <laughs> yeah, let's go. <laughs> let's go. Who needs no stinking countdown? Yeah. So this is Crash Bandicoot 1. Um, it's a pretty linear game uh, for the most part. It's a remake of the originals on the PlayStation 1. So first off, you're going to see me uh, breaking a lot of crates and jumping a lot. Uh, the movement is changed from the original game where uh, there was a lot of zigzagging and you, know, you didn't need to break the crates <clears throat> because you could skip the end cut scene here in this game I need to break all the crates if I can to save time. You also just got triple mask now. Uh, anytime you get three Aku Aku masks you start running really fast which is probably like the fastest movement you can basically do in this uh, in Crash 1. It's really useful also breaking all those crates is good that was nice. And while you're in mask form, you want to be jumping as little as possible so you get the most speed out of it as you can? Yeah, you want to maximize your movement in mask form um, by doing little short hops throughout the whole thing. And then here, you just hold X and the boxes fall on your head really fast. Also, uh, this game just got patched yesterday with awesome load times. So, so. Yeah, so you see that it used to take like an hour and now it takes like one second, so it's great. <laughs> so far, commentary falls a little behind, that's why. Yeah. Pretty used to it. Uh, so. So normally you want to like hop up hills and stuff, but with mask form specifically, every time you jump, you're losing time. So that's why he's just running. So up yeah, hills. this level will um, really demonstrate how important the movement and the mask form is, because I'm going to be attempting a kind of tough uh, skip while well, I miss the oh. mask box. <laughs> so that's a com yeah. that's a common mistake to make. Yeah, he accidentally just spun the mask a little early while he was still in mask form, and so he didn't get a second triple mask. Yeah, that's unfortunate. Of, instead of refreshing it, it just cancels it. So yeah, that's all right. It's, a, it's only like five seconds. It's not that big of a deal. I'll just wait on this, because I do want the triple mask on the next level. And it's really important to carry these masks uh, from level to level, because this game is really linear, unlike Crash 2 or 3, where you can kind of reroute based on your mask. In this game, you kind of have to uh, just manage yourself mm -hmm. the best that you can. Take what you're given. Yeah, yeah, exactly. You can see he's also jumping on the scenery. That's uh, pretty important in some spots, really, just to, especially when you're in triple mask. If you can jump on scenery so that you can minimize the total number of jumps, then that's really good. Yeah, you want to be hugging the walls and the corners any time you turn because it speeds up movement a lot. And you'll see the camera move faster as well as he's doing that. Yeah, I like to think of it almost like strafe jumping or, or like strafing in an FPS game. Uh, in this game, if you kind of move with the camera, you'll get a little bit of a speed boost. So this level is great because he just gets to run through the entire level with mass yeah, form. Yeah, um, I just blast through this level with mass form. It's pretty, pretty straightforward. As long as you have mass form, this level is really, really easy. You just got to keep your jumps. And he'll actually be damage abusing at the end because the next level boulders takes away all of his masks. And yeah, him. that's something to remember too. Uh, throughout this game, the uh, boulder levels and the uh, and the hog levels that when you ride the hog, those levels take away your mask, so you're free to use the masks wherever you want, uh, as long as you know those levels are next. So there's the intentional damage. Yeah, piece. I just walk right through that, so I don't have to wait because I know the next level is going to take it away. It's important to note that when he ran into the spikes there and took damage. Uh, obviously he has a mask and that's what allowed him to take that damage, but he actually got an automatic jump. He didn't actually press the jump button at all. That's just how damage boosts work in this game. 
and uh, it's important to note because sometimes if you're not ready for that, then it can throw you right into a pit. So this level is a great short. Uh, this level is a great showcase of how jumping speeds up your movement because anytime you're moving uphill, you want to be jumping because moving uphill normally by just running slows you down a lot, and uh, jumping downhill gains you a lot of speed. And he'll also be um, hugging the walls a lot as he's running away yeah, from the boulder. There's a set path that you want to take um, in this level. You don't want to just walk right down the path. And also keeping in mind that the boulder breaks boxes as well, so he doesn't have to spin all of them. Yeah, that's a difference from the original. Um, in the original, you would have to break them all. But in this game, you don't have to, which is nice. Another neat little thing that Cameron did is uh, he walked off a ledge and spun right as he got to the end of the ledge before jumping. Uh, that actually, spinning in, like increases the size of your hitbox slightly. And so when you do that and walk off a ledge and jump, you can actually get a little bit more coyote time, uh, which is just when you're able to jump after walking off a ledge. And that actually comes into play quite a bit in uh, a lot of the earlier stages It'll of come round. into play at the, uh, the, one of the first jumps in this level, actually. Mm -hmm. So we're trying to skip a cycle here by not waiting on this weave right here. Yes, yeah, so this is a tight jump. And he got it. Nice. That's a good jump. Yeah. You guys clap whenever you want. We're happy. <laughs> so yeah, this is upstream. There's a... Uh... <laughs> we got a wise guy back there. <laughs> There's not a lot to upstream besides you want to get to the end fast enough to manipulate a cycle correctly. Um, and when I get to that, I'll point it out. Yeah, because we didn't really mention it, but uh, this game is very cycle-based, and there are both local cycles and global cycles. Uh, local cycles are those that only t where uh, things start moving once you get near them, whether that be based on the camera getting near them or based on crash getting near them. Global cycles are things that are moving from the moment you load into the level. So there he did a little jump forward uh, to make the next leaf spawn sooner. That's the way he can skip that. I got hit there, but that's Unfortunately, fine. it didn't happen, but it would have let him skip that plant cycle right I there. I was a little bit slow, so... Uh, that's why you didn't make the plant cycle, but normally you'd want to beat that plant cycle without taking damage. Um, and taking damage there is going to cost me a triple mask and rolling stones, but it's not a huge deal. Now on to Papu Papu, this is the first boss. Um, Crash 1 has some of the best boss strategies of the trilogy, like of the Insane trilogy. And uh, you could just jump on him right away, which is pretty nice. This boss is definitely the tutorial to bosses, yeah. though. It's very yeah. simple. Yeah, you, you don't have to do a whole lot in this boss. Just jump on him as soon as you can. It's and also, during Papu's dying animation, he can hurt you, so you have to wait until it's finished. And then you run to the middle, so your jump to him is shorter. Yeah, if you were to just wait on the out edge, it would actually suck you onto him and bounce you out, which is uh, slower, so you want to stay in the middle of him. Dude, this game is so much faster with these loads. I know, it's crazy. It's insane. <laughs> Thank you, Vicarious it's Visions. It's insane. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So this is Rolling Stones. Um, normally I would get a mass form not here, but a little bit up forward. But uh, since I got hit in upstream, I'm not going to get that. And that loses about a second and a half, so it's not really a big deal. You also notice that even though he wants to break as many boxes as he can, he's not going to move too far out of his way for them. Yeah, if I'm going to miss a cycle because I'm missing boxes, I'm not going to go for it. Boxes drop at something like 10. Okay, oh, wow. <laughs> that's rough. Dang. That's unfortunate. That's fine. It's not that long of a death. Well, the next level would take his mass anyways, so it's not oh, yeah, a huge true. deal. Yeah, so it's not going to be too bad. That's what he was trying to do. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's really easy to just slightly overshoot a jump in this game. Yo, now you don't have the pressure of a deathless run. Yeah, wow, yeah. thanks. <laughs> So a little bit more platform here. But yeah, the boxes at the end fall at uh, about, what, 10 boxes a second or so. Um, so if it takes you more than about a tenth a second to pick up a box, then you don't want to bother. That's why you'll also see him spin a lot of enemies into boxes. And that's Rolling Stones. That death was unfortunate, but it wasn't super long. It wasn't too bad. And yeah, the next level does take away my mask, so I didn't need a mask for any reason. The next level is Hog Wild. It's an infamous level in uh, this game where you ride the hog to the end. You're going to see me jumping a lot in this level because that saves time. And that's the main form of movement in this level is to just mm -hmm. jump a lot and hug the turns. Yeah, this is effectively kind of an auto-scroller. Um, he can't like stop the hog from moving. It's always 
moving forward. Specifically while he's jumping here, you want to see like that, that animation yeah. right there where you, you don't actually see the hog fully land, but you just see a little bounce. Nice. That means that he had a frame perfect like buffer on his jump and uh, saves just like one to two frames every time it happens. Yep. At the very end of this level, there's going to be three sections of uh, hogs that are, you know, on a spike and are rotating and they're really awful. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, they're notorious. Especially uh, the last one. Yeah, the third one is the, really the bad one. And so once he gets near the end, he's actually going to intentionally stop jumping for a moment just because if he gets there too fast, he won't be able to clear the hog. Yeah, so you'll see me stop right here and go straight to the left. Um, so I intentionally don't hog nice. that turn. It looks, it looks yeah. free, by the way, but it's really not. There's it's a strat at the end where you can um, suicide off that shield guy right into the portal. It saves about half a second, but it loses about 30 if you fail it, so I don't tend to yeah, go for worst. that. It's not worth it. Yeah. Screw that. Strat. So this is Native <laughs> Fortress. Native Fortress is probably the first like hard level yeah. of the run. Mm -hmm. It's very cycle based. Um, so I set up the cycles a specific way so I can get through it as fast as I can. First off, you saw me grab that mask there, which is important um, on the second layer for a damage abuse. Yeah, it's actually a really cool damage. Right here, I'm forced to wait, so I just have to wait there. Yeah, here he's just trying to go as fast as he can without getting hit. And there's going to be some fire cycles he needs to beat once he gets up here. So that's the first one. And this one up here is the important one that he has to beat. Yeah. Which he did. Nice. nice. He should be good. The fire extends a lot higher up than it looks. Yeah. So right here, I also have to wait. You can beat that cycle, but if you beat it, you just have to wait on um, this spike cycle up here. So there's not really much of a point. And he's coming up to the damage boost pretty soon here. Yeah, yeah the damage boost here is pretty cool. So I just have to wait on this fire right here, and then I'm just going to run right to the spike and use the iframes to boost the TNT without waiting. Nice. Okay. And you also see him spinning on top of the bonfires that actually like to walk on them rather than bouncing on them, which saves a lot of time and movement. Yeah, bouncing in this game is uh, really slow compared to the original, where it was really like fast. It slows you down a bit to bounce, so um, I only bounce where I need to, so if I can avoid bouncing, um, I try to avoid it. Yeah, you can spin on any bounce, bounceable platform, basically. Or yeah, even boxes. If you spin right before you land, you'll just land on it. I want to try to spin in that fire as early as I can, so I can make it across the, nice. those three fires without taking damage, which I did. And then that bounce just gets him over the spikes. Jumping into the background earlier, by the way, was the developer intended shortcut. Like, that was yeah. in the original, too. So I should make this cycle. It's kind of tight, but... Nice. Nice. Bit awesome. of a hard cycle to make there, so it's nice that I got that. Now the final climb. It's really easy in any of these gate levels or uh, the like outside temple levels later that have climbs. It's it's incredibly easy to fall at the very end of them. And perfect. nice, you skip the platform at the end too. That was, so. a, that was a good level. Really good yeah, that was yeah, that was perfect. Falling during any of those climbing segments loses you basically as much time as a death. Yeah, like yeah. It, it's really it, bad. It takes a long time Pretty to climb up those things again. So this is up the creek. It's kind of a sequel to uh, Upstream. Uh, you kind of wait on a bunch of leaf cycles, and there's not a whole lot going on in it. So if you want to read some donations during this level, this is a perfect time for that. Absolutely. First off, we have Dial Wingo and The Poss with $10 saying, Yo, Cameron, best of luck, buddy. We are all so happy and proud for what you have done for this game. Kill it at, uh, at GDQ, man. We love you. Thank you, man. And we also have $15 from Tokaloni1 that says, Oh boy, time for my favorite crash speed run. Crash Nitro Kart for the Game Boy Advance. <laughs> Wait, something seems off here. <laughs> Anyways, good luck on the run, Cam. We have $15 from Deso Pilar saying, So excited to see a Kirby's Adventure run. It's my favorite game of all time. I hope we get the 100%. And good news, we absolutely have. We've just... Oh, well, nice. Yeah, we hit our mark for getting Kirby's Adventure upgrading to 100% run. Awesome. So. That should be cool. Stick around for that, that one, awesome. guys. You can probably sneak in one more. Yeah. All right. A silly giraffe has $30. My brother would never, never let me touch his consoles growing up, so every Saturday I ate cereal and watched him play Crash. So naturally, a decade later, that's what I'm doing during the Crash run. <laughs> awesome. That's pretty good. So yeah, we're reaching the end of Up the Creek here. Um, 
and I have two masks, which is good. Um, I want to point out uh, the difference from the original is uh, you would automatically get two masks in every boss, but this game that's not the case. It's just an intended design choice to make it a little bit harder, so you have to carry the masks um, through the boss. And this next boss fight, Ripperoo, makes use of these masks. Um, I'm going to use, be using one mask in this boss fight. Yeah, basically the, up. the concept of this boss fight is that you actually don't damage the boss directly, but you blow up TNT near him. And uh, if you have a mask, you can actually just spin the TNT when it's near him. So you actually can spin. That you first hit's kind of hard, so it's nice that I got that. Nice. Yeah, that's the important one. And then there's the damage nice. boost. And then I jump up here. Um, there can be a frame perfect uh, kill. I'll see if I get it. OK, I didn't get it. Uh, there is a frame perfect kill. Um, if right before he lands, if the TNT hits up, he can fall backwards through the waterfall, which saves about a second and a half. And uh, he could have used both masks there for damage boost to speed that fight up a little bit, but he actually wants the mask in the next level. Yeah, I do want the mask for a damage abuse in the next level. And the, le the next level is called Lost City, and we're going to be getting every single box. Yeah, we're going to be getting the green gem here, and I can't die in order to get that. Because um, that's how color gems work in this game. If you die, you can't get the gem. Um, so I'm trying my best not to die here and get all the boxes. Uh, what getting the green gem allows you to do is it allows you to skip a level later called Castle Machinery. Um, and it saves about uh, 40 to 50 seconds over doing that level, so it's pretty yeah. fast. Even with having to do all of this, even though this level has two bonus rooms in it, it's still faster to get this gem than it is to do Castle Machinery. Yeah, this game is also different from the original in that you need the bonus rounds to complete the, uh, to get the gem. Neat little mask there that they only give you the shadow for, by the way. <laughs> Yeah, it's hidden up there. It's pretty useful. These there, lizards are like really awful. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> By the way, there's a hard cycle here that I think I'm gonna catch. Nice. nice. It's really it. difficult. Wow, this is perfect. Now there's a uh, there's an exclamation point box he needs to hit here, and hopefully make it up here right on time. Perfect. And that exclamation point there's box. There's a damage abuse you can do on the left side there, but it's kind of tricky. So I'm just gonna go for the one on the right side right there. Good call. Nice. And yeah, these boxes back here are what that exclamation box uh, did. They yeah, and I get this Brio token, so we'll see the first uh, bonus in this level right now. It's the easier of the two. The second one is pretty difficult to go fast in. So Not, missed, oh, uh, oh, that was close. That's a hard jump right there to the top of that box. I thought you had it for a second. Yeah, it was looking really good. Okay, now he did uh, what makes the next bonus really difficult there, yeah. which is that um, in order to break multiple boxes at once, instead of bouncing off of each one, you can spin at the apex of your jump, like right before you start descending, and you'll actually land on the box and be able to bounce off it, but also spin uh, up to three boxes near it. Uh, so you'll see that a lot in the next bonus, and it's what makes it really difficult because the timing on it is really tight. Yeah, the next bonus tends to kill a lot of runs. You can um, die in these bonuses and still get the gem, uh, by the way. Um, so that's a uh, good Ooh, thing to was, know. Yeah. The other cycles were pretty bad right there. Yeah. So here's the bonus. Let's see how this goes. Nice. Oops. Ooh. Nice. Wow, Very beautiful. Good job. That is way harder than it looks. Yeah, I can't stress how difficult <laughs> yeah. that is. You, like, load up the game, go jump into a bonus, and try it out. It, it takes a lot of work to be able to be that consistent at it. So right here, you can skip this lizard uh, quicker than this, but I'm going to take it safe on. Yeah, probably a good call with the some weird cycles that were happening earlier. Yeah. And then there's the gem. There you see I waited for a moment before it spawned. If you go too quickly there, you'll walk right through the gem with based on how it spawns. So. There you go, got the green gem. Yep. Don't have to do castle machinery, sorry, Kane. <laughs> if you're watching. Yeah, we even found skips for castle machinery, and they just still didn't make it yeah, faster. Still, yeah, still slower. So this is Temple Ruins. Uh, this is a pretty cool level, actually, um, <clears throat> with some recent stuff that we found with Cycles. One of the things they do in this game is that a lot of the um, aesthetic themes that they do for the levels also match themes that they do for the platforming. So in this one, it's all about these moving platforms, like pretty much everywhere. Uh, lots of pits all over these levels. There's a moving platform up here that likes to not move sometimes, so hopefully it does yeah. that. <laughs> Gonna it's do a nice one. little jump around the corner here. Okay, okay I, I decided to move, good. <laughs> so right here, I'm gonna jump out. 
Um, that causes the cycle, the fire cycle over there, to trigger early. Um, we used to damage abuse across that fire, um, but we'd have to wait on that fire anyway, so just triggering it early like that is the same speed. And it also allows me to get this mass form up here, which isn't slower to get because of that cycle being up. So hopefully the cycles line up, he'll be able to carry this mask form all the way past a fire no. up ahead. Yeah, he didn't catch that it. That was a bad, right. bad cycle. So I won't be able to carry this mask across this fire down here because I didn't get that corner cut. So I'm going to wait this fire out. Um, I don't want to damage the beast there because I do need the triple mask in the next level, which is Road to Nowhere. Uh, the bridge levels are pretty infamous in the Insane Trilogy for being pretty difficult. Uh, the jumps are really precise. And you'll see why it's really difficult, uh, like right at the beginning of the level. So hopefully it goes well. This is definitely the coolest uh, triple mask form in the run. Yeah, so yeah it's it. probably the coolest strat with triple mask form that we do. Yeah, I definitely agree with that. The bridge levels are just all about holding forward, but like spacing out your jumps at the right time uh, and having to deal with moving pigs. But if you know how the game works, you can jump on these ropes. Now, jumping on the ropes is actually really difficult yeah. to do. Like, it's a very precise jump because you can easily slip off of the ropes while you're getting on uh, or even after you start running. This is really good, though. Yeah, this is awesome so far. That was perfect. That was completely perfect. Excellent. Good nice. job. So now you'll see him actually avoid the ropes for the most part here. Uh, he'll really only use them if he can skip having to, you know, wait to, to space out his jumps. Yeah, the ropes uh, are faster generally, um, but uh, if you can avoid using them, it's just recommended. Yeah, the, the, it's just so easy to die when you try to jump on the ropes, so. And right here, using this ice is faster because it gives you a little boost. Uh, yeah, you speed up a little bit when you slide down the ice going forward, and he spins also to stay on the ice a little longer. So right here, I'm going to do a cool thing. Bouncing, like I said, bouncing is slow, so you don't want to bounce yeah. on those turtles if you can. And just nice, nice. Yeah. very good. That's the first of two bridge levels, so we'll uh, hope yep. that the second one goes that smoothly. <laughs> yeah. And to explain just how hard uh, platforming on the ropes are, in the original Crash, uh, Crash's hitbox is rectangular shaped, which made it uh, fairly easy to walk on the ropes. But in this game, it's a pill-shaped hitbox, so you can slip off at any time. The ropes are extremely, extremely precise to jump on um, yeah. in this game compared to the original. And even in the original, it was still hard to jump on them. But in the original, it wasn't faster to use them. In this game, it is. So this is Boulder Dash, it's a sequel to Boulders. Uh, it's a pretty long and uninteresting level, so if you want to read off some more animations, that would be great. Indeed, indeed. First off, we have $44.58, very specific, from Rico, saying, Hey Cameron, oh, good oh. luck to you on your run. I know you'll knock it out of the park. Shout out to the best insane trilogy runner and everybody on his couch. Put this donation to Runner's Choice. Thank you, Rico. Uh, we have $150 anonymous donation saying good luck today, Cam, and hi to the couch. Thanks to all the GDQ staff for putting together this marathon and supporting a great cause. Putting this to Super Mario Odyssey, any percent. You have time for another. Cool. All right, we have Adri GDQ Lover for $250 saying hi, is GD SGDQ. Twice a year, you make this week so cool. Thanks uh, very much for the good you do for MSF. Let's go, runners. You are all amazing. Greetings from France. All right, so that was Boulder Dash. Uh, pretty easy. Um, so the next level starts at Vista, and uh, it's probably one of the harder levels in the run just because of uh, the cycles. We have to, uh, <clears throat> you have to manipulate them in a specific way to make them work and so you can go through the level as fast as you can. So uh, see how I can do here with that. Yes. Yeah, this is also the longest level in the run. Yes, mm -hmm. yeah. It's super costly to take a death or a so right fall. Right there, you can just skip that fire if you hold right. Only at the first spawn, if you die, you can't do that. Right there, I waited a moment before I 3D arranged that pusher so I can make those bats spawn late, so I can go through that uh, and grab that mask and come out really quick. It's important to note that he spun that lizard while he was in the air, like after jumping, because uh, those lizards, if you kind of spin them while they're on the ground, or if you just kind of like run into them a lot of the time, they will actually just push you backwards. They will make you walk in the opposite direction. 
and it's the worst. <laughs> but if you spin them in the air, then they don't do that. So right up here, I'm going to intentionally not 3D range this pusher. Um, if I were to 3D range it, it would make the cycles on the first vertical climb kind of poor. I got hit there, which Oof. is unfortunate, but it's fine. Yeah. You got slowed down a little bit by that, so this climb cycle might be... Yeah, this climb cycle might be a little off, we'll see. And whenever he says 3D range, by the way, he just means using the 3D space, because this is a 3D game even in these 2D sections. Uh, just using the 3D space to jump around an obstacle. Yeah, yeah. I missed the cycle. So oh, I had to avoid that. <clears throat> Normally you'd want to jump into that and then grab that cycle, but since I got hit and slowed down, uh, I wasn't able to make it. Yeah, having a mix of local and global cycles means that it's really hard to... So it's going to be know, hard for me to tell what the cycles are going to be because of that mistake. So uh, we'll yeah. see how this goes. There's a checkpoint right there that he's skipping because it takes forever to wait a full cycle on these platforms if you go get it. It's like a good 15 seconds. So that means so right here I'm going to grab this mask and bounce up here so then nice. get the same cycle. Perfect. Oops. Ooh. That's okay. fine. I would have had to wait on the fire anyway. Mm -hmm. And grab this mask while I wait for that to come around. These like spinning platforms are kind of the worst. <laughs> yeah. So if whenever the cycles get a little off, they get pretty obnoxious. Nice little 3D jump again. So right here, I would normally damage abuse, but there's a boss fight uh, that has a really hard threat in it, and I want two masks going into it to try and show it off. Right here, you count to three or four, and you can do the range around that. In here, we just have to hope that the cycle lines up since then. Yeah, there's a hard cycle skip here that I'm going to attempt. If it doesn't line up, I'm not going to go for it. It's it very dangerous. Yeah. It lined up. Wow. Cool. That's a that pretty was hard. really good. That's that was really awesome. Good job. Yeah. And you beat the fire. Cool. And I beat the fire. So missing the, messing up the cycles wasn't too bad. Uh, worked out in my favor. Yeah, really only the first climb that got slowed down by it. Yeah. yeah. It's important to note, too, with all these weird cycles, some of the levels, once you die once, the cycles are just kind of like completely thrown off. Yeah, yeah. like that. Normally, <laughs> if you do the level <laughs> you know. perfectly, um, all these like jumps at the end line up, but I messed up a little bit. It was a little off. And right here, I'm just going to waste it on the fall. And that's pretty much Sunset Vista. There's a lizard at the end who can be problems some sometimes, but you just, if you just 3D arrange him like that, then he's not an issue. There you go. So Good the luck. next boss is uh, Kuala Kong, and he, in my opinion, contains the hardest strat in the run. I'm going to attempt to skip two cycles to his fight. And I have two masks, so I have two shots at it. Yeah, so the way this fight works is uh, Kuala Kong will normally do a set of moves that you basically just have to dodge or uh, spin through some rocks that he throws at you. And then he'll throw one large boulder at you. And you are supposed to spin the boulder back at him. But uh, if you specifically jump out into the boulder and turn crash back as the boulder uh, causes you to do this weird like hyper jump thing, then you can actually damage boost through an invisible wall and then go spin Koala Kong directly. So we'll be taking this attempt here in a moment. Yeah, and when you spin Koala Kong, there's a possibility of doing two damage instead of one. Messed it up. Uh, okay. I have another shot at it. I went a little bit late. That's why I brought two masks in. This is really precise. It's probably really precise very. to wedge yourself underneath the rock. Which probably is the hardest strat of the run. Definitely. Definitely. Nice. Nice. There we go. And if you spin yeah, him, so now he's in the damage. back. And you can only damage him after he throws the big yeah. boulder. Yeah, you have to wait until he throws a big boulder. Ideally, you want him to get through him the first time, and then you can hit him twice. But this time, I hit him three times. So I'm still saving time here, even though um, I missed the first cycle. I still skipped one cycle of his fight. So I'm glad I got yeah. that. Awesome. And one of the quirks there kind of also alludes to a later strat that we uh, call hyper jumping which is that he kind of was wedging himself underneath the rock as he was getting hit by it. And uh, sometimes that can lead to some really fast momentum upwards. And we'll uh, see that in one of the later levels. Yep. So this next level is heavy machinery. Um, it's the first like uh, industrial, industrial level. theme level. Uh, it's a pretty cool level. It's actually one of my favorite levels in the run. Yeah, this is a good one. Um, it's very cycle based as well. Not so much as you know, like native fortress or heavy machinery. But you want to be going um, as fast as you can and not waiting at all to get a certain uh, set of steam cycles. Yeah, for the most part, you just don't stop as best as you can, and you should catch the cycle. 
So right down here, um, I'm actually going to skip a checkpoint that's there. Um, if I get that checkpoint, I'm not able to make the cycle, so it's pretty risky. If you were to die, you go right back to the beginning of the level and loses a ton of time. Yeah. Those jumps over some of those robots are actually pretty tight, so yeah. that's good. So I want to make the steam cycle, which I made. Nice. Nice. He's also going for another steam cycle coming up soon, and it's really crucial that he gets this one because if he misses it, then he misses a second one later on. And I got damage, but it's fine. It's okay. Okay. There'll be another mask you can grab. Yeah, there's another mask I can grab. I'll, all you want to do is take a one mask out of this level um, for Cortex power. One or two is fine. And damage boosting through the steam cycle is fine. He still made the other one that he wanted to make. So right here, um, since I was slowed down by getting hit, I don't know if I was going to make that cycle without yeah, getting hit. Yeah, it's hard, hard to so tell. So I waited there. And you do want this triple mask in the next level. Yeah, this mask is really important. So there's a hard elevator skip strat here. Oh, wow. Ooh. Didn't mean to get there. I'm not going to go for the uh, strat now. Oh, yeah. We didn't have lined up anyway. <laughs> so I'm not going to get mass form and Cortex power, which loses uh, a bit of time, but it's fine. Just a few seconds. You'll note he rubs up against these trampolines to try to like get these quick bounces, and then... Uh, I messed up the last one, but yeah. Yeah. it's fine. Better than me. Didn't fall. That's the main <laughs> thing. <laughs> There's a lot of boxes in this yeah. level. <laughs> <laughs> and all, a lot of those boxes come from the bonuses that we just don't do, so. Mm -hmm. yeah. So yeah, this is Cortex Power. This actually contains a really cool skip in um, full completion runs of the game. Unfortunately, it's not used here. It's important to note that there was a small cutscene at the beginning of this level, just like the bosses, which actually affects the cycles, so he does have to hang up a little bit on those yeah, first few. If I don't skip it fast enough, um, the cycles can be a little different. But now everything should line up pretty well for the rest of the uh, level. Yeah. yeah. There is a pretty tight jump that he's looking to make soon. But normally he would get mask form. Normally I would get mask yeah. form right there. So. Uh, that's right, so it's not going to... So this cycle's going to be a little bit different? You should catch it still, though, maybe. Uh, nice. Wow, no, that job. is so that was tight. Close. <laughs> <laughs> Especially without it. the mask form. Yeah. I had to get a really... Uh, I'm going to take a damage right there so I don't have to take one in generator room. Generator Room is one of the few levels in the run where we intentionally avoid mass form because it's uh, slower. It yeah. just makes the platforming really awkward. Mm -hmm. so that was really good for not getting yeah, mass no, that form. Was so. perfect. Yeah. Triple mask form, whenever you actually get that third mask, you may have seen that there's an animation that plays where you just kind of like jump up into the air and then you land on the ground and run. That's uh, the main reason that it's slower in Generator Room is you're basically not running straight on the ground long enough anywhere for it to save enough time to counteract that animation. And this level has a lot of scary diagonal jumps that yeah, you'll see. Yeah, this pretty difficult um, when you're first learning the run. This is one of the hardest platinum time trials, this box right here. I Definitely. do a little box optimization there. This is one of the scarier ones. Oh, this one always nice. gives me a heart attack. Yeah. Scary looking, at least. He has to wait for just a moment there on that platform, then these cycles should line up nicely. Yep. If he takes the death, then those cycles get awful. This part's also hard right here. Yeah. And we're going to attempt to not wait on any of these platforms, and the jumps between them are pretty tricky. Nice. Especially this one right here. Yeah. Nice. Really Perfect. good job. Really, really good. That does not always go that well. No. <laughs> no. In practice, it wasn't going that well. I got hit there, which is okay. Um, now I'm just going to miss a mass form in Toxic Waste, which is okay. It's uh, about four seconds. There's a strat there, right there you can do, and not take damage off that hot pipe and like spin across it and not have to ride the platform. But it's pretty precise. And I these masks that I have now are becoming extremely important. Um, so I'm going to try my best to save them. All right, that was a good generator. Very good. Good. Great. Just the one damage. And yeah, I took that damage. I was a little bit uh, fast that robot cycle. I'm not usually that quick to him. <laughs> Always good when you took damage because you were too fast. Yeah. <laughs> and I think this is J Hob's favorite level. This is this level is the best music, man. <laughs> I would say it's my favorite level, but we're it's pretty much hold forward and jump a bunch and stuff and jump around the barrels. So we're just gonna shut up and let you listen to the music a little bit. And you can read donations if you would like. <laughs> but what about the music? <laughs> you probably are here for that. All right. Um, we have $150 from Ozul that says, Hey, I'm just here to say good luck with the run and how I hate the high road level. 
Thanks for keeping and doing this great event. Greetings from Spain. Prinny Patroller gives $20 and says, here's to Doctors Without Borders. All the speedrunners and all the amazing work they do, dude. Run fast and respond faster, save frames, and save lives. So, <laughs> um, it's important to note that these two masks that I have, um, that mask that I got at the beginning of the level is the uh, last mask that I'm going to get. If I'm going to wait there so I don't get hit. Um, it's the last mask that I get until uh, Lights Out, which is after Slippery Climb. So I have uh, quite a few levels uh, until I get another mask. So it's important to keep these for a specific strat in Slippery Climb that I'm going to be attempting. Up, up next, we have Pinstripe, the uh, boss that I'm going to let Depp explain. All so right, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Remember so, not to stand on the chair. <laughs> yeah. So uh, he's just going to wait here. He could hit him. Um, right now if he wanted to, but instead he's going to time his jump perfectly to... Okay, he didn't cancel that shooting animation, but hopefully he gets this one. If he times it right, he won't shoot. Uh, okay. I messed up both wow. times. That's all right. Dang. It's pretty precise. It's a pretty precise it's jump. Very... Um, At least he didn't get hit. What happens is you cancel this gun animation. Don't use so the chair. Don't use the chair. <laughs> oh, they they, they patched that out. <laughs> they patched that, like, I forgot yesterday. that they patched yeah. that yesterday, yeah. <laughs> That's the one thing that they patched. <laughs> they made any difference anything. For some reason he used to be able to stand in the chair and not get hit. <laughs> For some reason. And then you just spin the table that and you die. Right. <laughs> there you go. The strats in him only save about four seconds, so it's not good though. The fact he didn't get hit is good. Yeah, that that usually if you don't get that uh, Usually if you don't get it, you get hit. It's hit. better to go a little early to can go a little late. Mm -hmm. So this is the high road. This is the infamous the infamous one. Yeah. Um, I'm gonna tunnel vision this one if you guys want to talk through it. Yeah, so this is generally considered like the hardest level casually, I'd say, uh, out of the any percent run, you know, more or less. <laughs> um, and using the ropes here in order to skip every turtle is really what Cam's gonna be trying to do for speed. He, anytime there's also a section that's going to ha make him stop a lot, then he'll jump and run on the ropes. Once again, jumping on these ropes is like really precise. Very precise. So every time he does it, he has a huge risk of dying. Indeed. But turtles are slow, man. He really, really wants to keep both of these masks, so. Yeah, you also to the level. be careful about these hogs and everything. You can see he actually ran on the right side to manipulate the hog to be on the right so that he could jump to the left yeah. when he got near him. And then you can just jump to the right of that turtle for some reason. <laughs> He's past the scariest parts of the level, mm -hmm. so it's looking really good. There's also some really risky jumps that happened early on that you can do by like running all the way off the ledge and then jumping I'm at the last jump possible on these moment. Turtles. Might as well play it safe for now. Yeah. The rest of the level was really solid. Yeah. So that's good. Then you basically have to jump off that one more or less. <laughs> Alright. That was there very go. good. That nice. was good. We got the mask. So I have the mask for slippery climb. Um, there's two launches in this level or hyper jumps um, to send you flying. I'm only gonna do the second one. I'm gonna skip out on the first one because it loses a ton of time to fail. Um, and the second one's a lot cooler, so I want two shots at um, getting that one. So this is the first of our like nighttime castle levels. Uh, well, the only one actually that yeah, will be fun. in this run. Uh, these are mostly based on local cycles. There actually aren't like a ton of global cycles in this level, but there are some. Um, and you'll see like sometimes he just goes and breaks boxes when he knows he has to wait on the cycle anyways. So far, so good. The, the To note, there's only actually one checkpoint in this entire level. So this is one of the most costly levels for deaths. Yeah. Also, yeah, that cycle always just kind of <laughs> does that for you. It's nice. So yeah, um, right right here, there's a um, hyper jump you can do where you jump off the bird into the spike. I'm going to not do it. Um, it saves about 10 seconds. Uh, it's pretty hard, so. The other one is just way cooler. So. The other yeah. one's way cooler. I want two attempts at it, so. Basically, the idea of the trick is to wedge yourself in between the spike um, and get thrown up uh, way high up in the air. You'll see how cool that can potentially be. So I'm going to skip this checkpoint since I wasn't going to make either of those cycles. Oh, oh. Oh. If you had gotten a little more Go right. do it again. <laughs> <laughs> no. 
That was still really good. No, yeah, that, that still saved a bunch of time. But like, what he was trying to do was actually land up on top of yeah, the you can entire land on, stage. You can land on top of the wall and just walk across all this and not have to wait like ever. And you can just go to the end. But that's I didn't get cool. quite enough um, height from the launch, so that's fine. I still got all the way up there. You still got to see what it looked like. Yeah, so. yeah. So here there's a cycle skip you can actually do that's uh, really hard. Oh, I'm not going to do it. Very hard. And if I were to die now, I would go back to the beginning of the level, and that's not ideal. So. Yeah, skipping that checkpoint makes things a lot more scary. Yeah. We're at the end of the level, though, so. Yeah, here we go. Unless this scientist uh, <laughs> he has, really bad has a trick up his sleeve. <laughs> so that's the free climb. At least I could have shot the hyper jump. Nice. Yeah, that scientist isn't exactly the Peyton Manning of the, uh, <laughs> the one from Stormy Ascent. So the next level slides out. It has a gimmick where you grab the mask to keep your light. You just want to keep holding forward um, and getting masks. If you slow down at all, you can lose the mask and you have to play the level in the dark. And unless you have the level completely memorized, uh, it's pretty hard to play it in the dark. Yeah, and finishing this level with you know the the mask actually still out does keep his mask into the next and level. And I do, so. and I do want to keep that mask, so it's important that I don't get hit by anything here. But other than that, it's mainly just holding forward, and you can kind of pick up almost every single box on the way. Uh, you have to wait on a couple of these cycles and stuff. It's not too much interesting about this level, so we could probably throw over for a couple more donations. Absolutely. Jay Broman sent in $512, says great event for a great cause. Let's add that Super Mario Odyssey any percent run to make SGDQ last even longer. And $150 from Salerno Labs 195, it says thanks for the runs. Haven't left the couch in a week. <laughs> Came Guru sends in uh, $50 and says, needs to donate for one of my favorite childhood games. And forgetting to see the Super Mario Odyssey. Good luck with the run. So we're reaching the end of lights out here. I didn't quite get the fast cycles that I wanted, so I'm going to have to wait here. That's still pretty solid, though. Yeah, it was solid. Good. Um, so this mask, like I said, is important. Jaws of Darkness is a really hard level that's coming up next. I'm going to be going for pretty much every hard strat in the level. One thing to notice is that a lot of the hitboxes in this game are actually a lot more specific than they look. Like, they're not really just big squares or anything like that. Like, for example, the axes that he was jumping over, the wooden rods have a hitbox that doesn't hurt you but stops you. Mm -hmm. So every time he was jumping over those, it was actually a little tighter than so it right seemed. right here, I want to catch that pillar cycle by jumping into the fire as soon as I can. He grabs a mask there as well. And right here, uh, you don't want to jump into that fire too soon, because uh, if you do, these pushers up here can glitch the heck out for whatever reason. Yeah. So I try to avoid that. I'm going to be going for a really hard trick. It's called Backwards Flame Skip. It's really hard. I'm going to be attempting it uh, in this backwards section up here. If he gets it, it'll let him save a mask for later for safety. So. Imagine walking on the ropes, but five times harder. Yeah. Yeah. He's just going to try to jump on the right side of this little fire pit. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Unfortunate. Yeah, it's yeah, but It's really hard. It's not much slower. Yeah. Scary diagonal jump there. Yeah. There's an even more scary one coming up here. Oh, you're going for it. Oh, nice. 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 That jumps really That's hard. That was a lot harder than it looks. Yeah. He specifically had to spin and walk off the ledge to increase his coyote time to be able and to I jump over And I made these there. cycles, which is yep. the goal to make that without waiting. Nice. Right here, you want to jump off this, this moving platform earlier than normal, so you can make it through these spear cycles. I have nice. uh, one mask here. Normally you damage abuse through this, but I'm going to save it uh, for the end of the run just for safety. We're jumping diagonally. You have to wait on this fire pit, so might as yeah. well break all those boxes. Yeah, Yeah, I'm just keeping this mask. Just You never know. Okay. Oh. okay. Uh, told you that happens. Okay. <laughs> Were then, you trying to go for like that? No. Okay. <laughs> yeah, there's actually a glitch that can happen here where you just walk straight through the crushers. Yeah, the first time like three of us had seen it was yesterday. <laughs> yeah. Uh, that happened. That was probably that happened again. Well, I don't have a mask now. Good thing you saved that one. Yeah, good thing I saved that yeah. one. Yeah. <laughs> this is the most boxes that fall on Yeah, this is the level with the most boxes on your head. And there's a lot. There's uh, two. Yeah, there's two bonuses in this level, so. Each have a lot of boxes in them. And an extra little like section entirely. So this is one of the hardest levels in the run. 
uh, yeah. Oh, this here. this is probably the yeah. hardest level. It's hopefully really difficult. This. Okay. Looking good. Oh man. All right. Hopefully he gets this part. Oh. Oh, okay. Man. All right. We're done. Oh, thank go. God. So that Dude, got, that's why I got the Lost City gem earlier, is so I can get that level. Yep. Every practice run, that was just failing. Yeah. Yeah, that's <laughs> a run killer it. for sure. <laughs> yeah, green gem's pretty nice. <laughs> All right, Embryo. Uh, this has a really cool strat that I think Dep, you actually found the strat. Right? I did. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, so this you first half of the this first half of the fight will just be normal. He just steps on these green slimes, dodges the purple potions. But once we get to the second phase, you'll see an uh, interesting way of beating it. And there was actually a soft lock in the first half of this fight where he can jump on the green blobs too fast, but it got patched yesterday. So don't have to worry about that's that. That's pretty mm -hmm. nice. All right, now we get to see a nice little strut here. Yeah. Yeah. Swag, swag. Oh, jeez, oh, yeah, you bailed. <laughs> I don't blame you. You can barely outrun the uh, purple yeah. potions with that. It's actually faster to it's walk It's actually harder to do than it looks as well. Yeah. So. The strut is like the hardest movement tech <laughs> in the game. But it looks cool. So. I set it during the Crash 3 run, and I still stand by Here it. we go. Uh -oh. There you go. You got to see it a little okay, bit. Okay, so yeah. this All is right. a strat um, that's about to come up. It's supposed to by Deb. Normally you're supposed to... Um, these bricks will fall from the ceiling, and you'll jump on his head three times. But instead, um, you'll see this first time, he just uh, he just kind of stays on his head the whole time. Doesn't have to worry about jumping. Yep. Just yep. hold forward and <laughs> stay there. It's really easy, actually. And then for some reason, uh, he just goes through the wall. Yeah, it doesn't break the... <laughs> that's for you. At home, go try that. Like yeah, it's, it's really not that. It, it, ta it takes really like just easy. a little bit of doing sometimes, but it's it's not too bad. So this is the lab. This contains one of the hardest cycles to make mm -hmm. in the run. Um, I'm gonna attempt it. If I don't think I'm gonna make it, I'm not gonna go for it. But at the beginning here, you can make that cycle on first entry. All these exclamation point boxes that he's hitting are, you know, opening the doors or raising the platforms, stuff like that. So any of the ones that open doors specifically, he wants to hit as early as he possibly can so that he's not waiting on the door. Yeah, and he's trying to make a cycle at the very, very end of the level. Yeah, all of the lasers that are moving back and forth are actually global cycles, so they don't care when you get to them. Right. The first one he's trying to beat is this right here, which he beat by a nice lot, so he's good. You actually hit that guy into some TNT in this room, which is pretty nice. All right. And then from here, oh, oh too Ooh. early. Oh, dang. Yeah, a little too early. I tried to beat that electricity like really, really soon. Yeah. Which is what you want to do to beat the cycle, but. Yeah, so that's going to mess up the cycles. Yeah, so now I'm going to have to wait around a little bit on some things. That was pretty close to a checkpoint, so it's not a Yeah, it's deal. not a long death. It's fine. You can still do the uh, sexy bounce at the end. Yeah. Well, yeah. <laughs> the bounce at the end is pretty cool. Nice. Yeah, okay, good. <laughs> All right. Making that in just one TNT bounce is a lot harder than I, Ideally, you want to make that electricity cycle right before it. You make it just barely, and then you can just go right to the end. And if you thought that level right. was hard, this is yeah. probably the hardest. Yeah, we were kind of kidding with Castle Machinery, but like this is the real hardest Ooh, level. Oh, my God. He did that. That's like I can't believe he did it. That's like a frame-perfect jump right there. <laughs> yeah. yeah. All right. <laughs> final boss. So the final boss is uh, Cortex. Okay. Um, he's kind of in a set pattern. There's not a whole lot you can do to speed this boss fight up. You, crash yeah, it's consistent every time. Right. And just so you know, time will be when I hit the last uh, green orb at him. See, all this fight is. You just kind of wait. You just kind of wait for him to shoot his stuff, and then you spin it. Mm -hmm. Spin the green ones back at him. It's important to note that uh, if Cam holds down, he can't run off of this blimp. But if he holds up, he actually can. Mm -hmm. And because of the fact that Cortex is in front of you and uh, throwing the green orbs from that direction, you want to jump out and hit them uh, a lot closer to him just to save a few frames. Like that. Yeah, yeah like that. It can that. be really but scary to do that. Yeah. yeah if you, you don't turn back them. in time, you'll just fall right to your death. Also, the hitboxes of yeah. some of these are a little questionable. Yeah, so. the hitboxes in Cortex are extremely questionable. I have a really good question. Especially on this phase right here. <laughs> this is probably the hardest part. <laughs> nice. Nice. All right. Okay, okay so get ready for time. When this orb hits him, it's time. Hardest hit. The hardest phase. And All right, time. time.
pretty good. Wow. Awesome. Holy cow. <laughs> All right. So yeah, that's Scratch One NST. Uh, thanks for having me. Uh, shout out to my family, the guys behind me, uh, everyone in the posse, Tyler, Tom, Ryan, Jake. If anybody, if I missed anybody, you can yell at me online later. So. <laughs> thanks, everybody. All right. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Awesome. That was a fantastic run. Thank you so much, Cameron. And of course, the donations are going crazy right now. Um, from Aku Aku, we have $25. It says, Udubaga. And Zach72 sends in $250. It says, Crash was my first video game. It's awesome to see it beaten in an hour while it took five year old me months. Thanks to everyone at this marathon for all you do. All right, that is it for me for at least the next couple hours. I am passing it over to the ever-capable proto-magical girl who will whisk you off into a world of Kirby's adventure. All right, thank you guys. See you later. Good morning, Summer Games Done Quick 2018. My name's Proto Magical Girl, and I'm going to be your host for this next couple hours of Comfy Kirby and New Super Mario Brothers. Hopefully, my throat is feeling ready to poyo. We'll see what happens. Uh, in the meantime, we are currently setting up for Kirby's Dreamland Beat Extra Mode with E Bloody Candy. If you've never seen this run, Kirby's Dreamland is a really neat speed game. It has a ton of interesting movement and a lot of really impressive platforming. And extra mode makes the game really cool to watch. So be sure to stay tuned if you were just around for Crash, and we will be bringing you some Kirby shortly. D. Keldy donated $150. Thanks, SGDQ. Great cause to support. Great cause, indeed. Doctors Without Borders is a wonderful charity, and I cannot express my gratitude for all of your donations enough. Currently sitting at $1,286,174. Now, for those of you GDQ historians in the audience who like to keep track of this sort of thing, that's really, really close to our donation total from Summer Games Done Quick 2016. So that's going to be our next like milestone to push through. Let's keep getting those donations in, keep supporting Doctors Without Borders. We still need a lot of money to get to that Super Mario Odyssey incentive, not to mention the Mario Maker Hard Level Showcase, Undertale All Yellow Credits, and a couple really, really neat incentives for the Final Fantasy VI finale that is going to be coming up tonight. So keep bringing your donations and keep supporting Doctors Without Borders, and let's get all these incentives met. And remember also that you can win a ton of cool prizes with your money. Go to gamesdonequick.com and head to the tracker to see everything going on with incentives, bid wars, and prizes. Thank you so much, The Fur, for $250. I was going to lock in that 100% Kirby run, but then someone else did it, so uh, Odyssey, I guess? That's a good choice. Odyssey is worth your money. $150 from Longbow Havoc. Let's get an extra game to keep this SGDQ going just a little longer.
Gentiana donated $150. Let's see this hard level Mario Maker. Make it happen. Make it happen indeed. The hard level showcase will be absolutely amazing if we can get that donation incentive met. That's currently sitting at 23,000 out of 50,000, so keep bringing those donations in, and we can definitely get there in time. Thank you so much, Lolly, for your $50 donation. Greetings from Australia. I've loved the entire event so far, but today's the day I've been looking forward to all week. Spyro, Crash, and the first two Kirby games all in a row. Best of luck to all the runners. Love seeing these games get blown sky high. Quick shout out to my dearest friend and chess master, June. You're doing great, doofer. Donation goes to the Super Mario Odyssey bonus run. Lapras Soul donated $100. I want to see that Undertale all yellow credits run. Would like to thank a couple, or I guess possibly one, anonymous donors for their $100, $200, and $105 donations. Uh, none of those had a comment, but thank you all, I guess, maybe, so much for your support for Doctors Without Borders. An anonymous $150 donation says, Loving this crash run so far. I am terrible at platforming, so it's always fun to watch people who are great at it. Cheers to the couch, and thanks to all folks who make Summer Games Done Quick possible. And Sean Hofer donated $25. Shout out to the GDQ crew running everything behind the scenes for making it all happen. Scruffy201 donated $50. I, for one, am excited to see my favorite pink hunger elemental rush through his adventures in dreamland. Kyle! Thank you, Caitlin Scar, for your $250 donation, and Benjamin Harris for your $150 donations. Neither of those had comments, but we really, really appreciate them nonetheless. To give a quick update on some upcoming incentives, Undertale All Yellow Credits is currently sitting at about $6,000 out of $25,000. That's kind of a ways to go. $20,000 isn't a small amount of money, but I know we can get there. In addition to that, uh, Super Mario Maker's Hard Level Showcase is sitting at a little under $25,000 out of $50,000. We're halfway there. I know we can make it the rest. And the game that I think everyone is thinking about the most, Super Mario 
Odyssey, an incredible run that's going to be put on by an incredibly talented world record holding runner, Nike Vita. That's currently sitting at a little under 40,000 out of 150,000. That's a big incentive. I believe that's the biggest incentive GDQ has ever had. Maybe don't quote me on that. We'll see. But I know we can get there. We've got a whole day. We've got some incredible prizes and an incredible cause to be giving money to. So keep getting those donations in if you want to see this awesome bonus content. And in the meantime, stay tight. Stay tuned for Kirby. Thank you, Courtney, for your $10 donation. As always, shout outs to the GDQ staff for putting on an amazing show for an amazing cause. Thank you, NAR13, for your $25 donation. Shout out to the commentators. You're doing a great job. Alakon donated $50. My first donation this year. Keep rocking at SGDQ. Absolutely loved the Resident Evil 1 HD speedrun. Ice Dog 004 donated $25. Thanks for all the hard work, runners. And Quake donated $30. Great event so far. Keep up the amazing work. Thank you so much, Shaman16x, for your $500 donation. Got to donate for some good Kirby running. Good work, everyone, at GDQ. Thank you, Anonymous, for your $20 donation. Mario Odyssey would be the perfect way to cap off another great marathon. Some people in the crowd appreciated that. <laughs> the rest of them are too tired. It's understandable. But stay awake. Kirby's coming up soon. You don't want to miss it. Kirby is your friend, and he cares about you, and he wants you to watch these speed runs. How can you say no to that? Wraith donated $20. More runs aren't a bad thing, right? Let's get Mario Odyssey going. Hype? Thank you, Silver192, for your $20 donation. My good friend Higuchi gave me a shout out earlier in the marathon, so here's one for her. Watching the marathon with you has been a ton of fun, and I'm looking forward to the rest. And thank you, Plushy, for your $5 donation. Thank you, GDQ, for this amazing event. An anonymous $50 donation reads, Missed my opportunity to donate last GDQ. Not going to make the same mistake again. Thanks to everyone who made this possible. You all are awesome. Thank you very much, Anonymous, and thank you for your generous donation. Pandaren donated $100. 
I love what Doctors Without Borders do, and I love what you guys do. V Today donated $150. Love watching good runs for a good cause. This goes to the Mario Maker Showcase. <laughs> 